So to continue on with my little mini series on answering electrical questions from viewers, this week a uh, viewer wanted to know how many outlets you should use for a specific circuit. And so what I'm going to do is develop a couple circuits and just kind of show you how to calculate uh, maybe how much, how many outlets you should use based on the amount of amperage and the wattage that your devices are going to use. So a few different appliances that you really shouldn't incorporate into any circuit with more than one outlet is a refrigerator, a deep freeze, a microwave, a dishwasher, washing machine, or an electric fireplace. Some of these appliances either draw a lot of amperage on their own or it's required by code to have them on their own circuit. And of course with a refrigerator and deep freeze, you don't want to have it on a circuit to where you're plugging anything big in and it trips the circuit and you lose all your food. So you're allowed to have up to 10 outlets on a circuit but what you got to remember is there's only so much amperage that can be supplied to all those outlets. So let's say you took 10 outlets, hooked a 20 amp breaker up in your panel box, and powered all of those outlets. As soon as you start plugging a bunch of stuff in, there's only so much amperage to go around. Here I have a 20 amp breaker. Breakers are used to power your circuits, but they will trip at 80% of the current draw as a safety feature. And so if I have a 20 amp breaker, I really only have 16 amps to play with on this circuit. The 16 amps may not mean anything to you if you can't get the information to determine how many amps each appliance uses. And where you can get the information needed to figure out the amps is on a little tag on all of your appliances. So for this little radio I have, it says AC 120 volts and 9W stands for 9 watts. We need those two numbers, the 120 volts and the 9 watts. And so what you're going to use is this formula right here. Watts divided by volts equals your amps. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 120 volts and the 9 watts and we're going to do the math and figure out how many amps this, this little radio draws. So this little radio only draws 0 .08 amps. So we'll take the amperage of the little radio off from the full amps in our circuit. But then you went out and bought a ridiculously huge big screen TV and that's going to take off let's just say another two amps. And then of course you got to hook your PlayStation up to it. So that's going to take another five amps. And of course you have your huge stereo system. So let's take another six amps off. And then you have that arcade system that you bought. So that's going to take about another three and a half amps. And then you're going to go put in, let's say, another six lamps for ambiance. So that's going to give you another, let's just say, about three amps. So let's say all of these devices are plugged into just one circuit, one 20 amp circuit. So let's see where we're at. So you have everybody over for a party, and you get all this stuff going and all of a sudden you're drawing 19.5 amps. So at some point, before all this stuff gets wound up, you've already tripped your breaker because you only have 16 amps on the circuit. So the trick here is, is to decide what kind of appliances or what kind of devices you're going to be plugging into a certain area and then design your circuit off from that. So here's a basement that I'm trying to finish. And so I want this to be a real happening place, like a place where I can just go have a bunch of parties and things like that. And so what do I need to do to make sure that I don't put in too many outlets on a circuit and I make sure that I have plenty of power for all the things that I want to put here in the basement. So let's say right over here, let's say this is where I'm going to have my stereo system, an Xbox, PlayStation, big screen TV, the whole thing. So I went and I figured out that either using the nameplates or just going online and just kind of figuring out how many amperage, how much amperage each device uh, draws. Let's say that, um, let's say it draws 14 amps when everything's said and done. So I might only go put in, say like three outlets right here to where I can sit there and plug a bunch of stuff in. And I know that if I put in a 20 amp breaker, the max that I'm gonna draw is about 14 amps and so I should be safe. I shouldn't trip anything here. And so then that means that my panel box, I can just run a wire over to an outlet, to an outlet, to an outlet, and just these three will be powered from one breaker. Now if my TV and everything's here, I probably want some couches over here. 
And so let's say I'm going to have a couple lamps. And so I'm going to want an outlet here and I'm going to want an out, I'm going to want an outlet here. And then let's say that the couch is here and my wife always gets cold. And so she likes plugging in the space here. Well, each one of these lights are only going to draw maybe like a half an amp whenever I plug in a, uh, a lamp into each one of these outlets. But then she's going to go plug in a space heater, which is maybe going to draw up to 12 amps. So now I've got about 13 amps just right here between these two outlets. And so maybe I put these two outlets and maybe a third one for a phone charger or something right here um, and just isolate these three outlets on another circuit. And then maybe over here in the corner I have some sort of wet bar and so I have a slushy machine and I have a couple neon signs and um, and then like a blender or something else and so right over here uh, maybe I'll just put two outlets in my little mini bar and hook those up to one circuit. And then over here on the other side this is where I have the arcade machines and a pinball machine and air hockey table and all this other stuff and so maybe I want to put maybe three or four outlets over here and so the idea behind all of this is I haven't gone nuts and said oh yeah well I can put 10 outlets on a breaker and so I just go put all of my outlets on one breaker I've actually methodically thought about this and thought how much amperage is going to be drawn because that's what's going to be limited on your circuit is how many amps you could draw before your breaker trips so now I'm going to remodel my kitchen and my wife loves to cook and bake and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And so how many outlets do I need to make sure that I have in this new kitchen? She wants to put in a bread maker. And a bread maker draws about 7 amps. And then she wants a crock pot. And those draw about 12 amps. And then in the middle of all this, she wants to use her food processor from time to time. And it's going to draw about 8 amps. So let's just space it off from these three appliances. So let's say, worst case scenario, she's going to be using these three appliances at one time. So how many outlets would you put in? So if you combine, say, the bread maker and the food processor, you're at 15 amps, and on a 20 amp circuit, you'd be fine. The crock pot would have to be by itself because it's at 12 amps. But what I would do is I would put in an outlet for each one. So if you have any potential to be really busy in the kitchen, to where you're going to be using multiple things at one time, I would definitely, definitely plan on having enough circuits to make sure that you can accommodate all of this. Now, I don't think it would be wise to just put one outlet on one circuit and so say, Throughout your kitchen, you only have, say, one out one outlet per circuit. So one outlet, so one breaker powers one outlet. So I wouldn't do it that way. So the way I would do it is I would still have three circuits, but then what I would do is I would have a GFCI outlet and then a regular outlet wired up together. And if you look at my other videos, you can see how to wire this up. And so what I would do is I would have three sets of this in my kitchen. And so this makes up my three circuits. And the reason is, is because if you have a GFCI, the GFCI is going to protect this other outlet. But also, if you plug something into, say, the GFCI, and then you plug something else in here, when this trips, you're going to trip your GFCI. And so you're not going to have to run down to your basement all the time and go re reset the breaker. But also, these are also required by code to have in your kitchen as well. And some of my other electrical videos talk about that. So I hope this video helps you understand the relationship between your breaker and how the breaker powers the outlets and how much amperage can be drawn before the breaker trips and you just don't have any power anymore. And so if you have any questions, please comment. If you have any other questions on any type of electrical stuff, please comment and I'll try to make a video on it and see if I can help you out. We do have an electrical playlist where we've tried to go through and address more of the common things that you would see in the house and try to explain how some of these things work and how to help you wire things up yourself. So I hope this video helps. 
We're so grateful for everyone who has subscribed and supports our channel. And thanks for watching.